another um, historian is with us that could help answer this, but they're commenting that the closer they look at the circular features at the bow and stern, the more they start to think that these are hydrophone arrays. And then we have another commenter saying that the damage here on the bow, it looks too yeah, severe for you. a torpedo yeah. strike. I'll just... Uh, so they're thinking it might look like her forward battery exploded. But uh, maybe consistent, didn't we say earlier, there was a battery fire on board, which is one of the reasons. Yeah, I think it, it wasn't, I don't believe it was scuttled right after the battery fire. Is that correct, Dan? Yeah. But... From, from the records, it does not look like they, you know, was got our dur the battery fire was put out. But what happens with a fire when it's really hot, it weakens the metal. So that would be, you know, an ideal place for this to break, right? Because yeah. it's probably the weakest section. It's already section. been weakened by that. Because, you know, fire, fire, fire does not do well when you, you know, it, it actually undo, lots of times you're anneal the steel, so it's harder. And once you heat it up again, it loses all that strength. And then Dan, here's a good one too. The chat is saying there's a lot, lo uh, lot worse U.S. submarine names than dolphin, like pom pom, or the ho, harder, croaker, pedo, poggy, scamp, snook, batfish, or plunger. <laughs> so what's up with uh, the Navy's namings here? I thought well, they're all based off like USS Admiral. So in the older days, they used to be named a lot of things, but lots of fish. Uh, and then I think at the 688 class, the Los Angeles class, they started naming them after they started naming them after uh, cities. And with our uh, our other subs are named after states. So you know it's that's sort of a modern time. Uh, no, naming. that's good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I still think they, they make should make the um, fish eyes a little translucent. Just a little, maybe 75% or something. Oh, yeah, okay. I like, yeah, I think if that's okay with you guys. All right. Shut. <laughs> I'm on the Alabama, one ping only. <laughs> I like the when they did a poll for the public to name the uh, polar research ship and Bodie McBoatface won. Yeah, <laughs> that led to a holy, uh, a whole <laughs> raft of uh, naming things from snowplows to all sorts. You know, <laughs> yeah, gritty McGrit gritter and. Yeah, all sorts of things. <laughs> I actually got to sail with uh, Bodie McVote face oh, did down you? south. Yeah, yeah so, so the David Attenborough, I think it's called now. Uh, not on the ship, so the actual Bodie McVote face AUV. So yeah, because <laughs> they didn't name the research ship that, but then they yeah. named the... They have seven Bodie McVote faces. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, a, that's a lot of boat faces. Yeah. I feel and like when you get to seven, it kind of loses its fun. Well, they don't. They don't name them <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. It's just Bodie McBoat faces. Whoever is out in the field at that moment. Uh. <coughs> so, our chat is saying that during World War II, they were naming subs after fish and were in a rush and made a bunch so they actually kind of made up some names and went back and actually named fish after the submarines technically because the sailors on board wanted to know what fish their boats were named after <laughs> fun fact got a little little guy just down in the lower corner there yeah, yeah. Uh, Okay. Was that a shrimp? No, no oh. it's a fish. Oh. Fish of some sort. 
Maybe it is a shrimp. No, it's a, it's a fish. Kind of hard to tell on the video, though. We got a bigger guy off to the right. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Rachel, for photogrammetry, are you happy with this kind of standoff? We got enough uh, seafloor around it for the... Uh, that's what it looks like, what, maybe like uh, two meters or so, a couple more than that? Uh, yeah, probably around that. Yeah. You think down? I think yeah, that's we've been doing two and a half meters. All right, I think we're right on two now. Yep, so two meters good. Okay. Okay, uh, yes. so you want me to fly the perimeter around, around this? Altitude. Yeah. Fly the, fly, fly the perimeter and probably go over the top, like, um, okay. go over the top, like, probably twice, you know, like, halfway through, just so that we, or, you know, um, yep, yeah, roger that. Uh, I'm going to go around to my left, so I'm turning clockwise and, uh, yeah, yeah taking that's these turns out the tether and pilot's choice. Roger, roger. Uh, but we haven't started photogrammetry yet, so hold on. And yeah. we are... Rolling, or oh, hang on. <laughs> oh, you know what? Sorry, I gotta forgot. I gotta close the screen. See, Rachel's doing it again. She's making it look way more difficult than just pushing the red button. <laughs> yes, yeah, I, f I, uh, <laughs> I forgot uh, how some of these things work. I also had a bit of a late, late night last night. Uh, all right, and we are recording. Okay. Uh, looks like our view there got a little bit tweaked up, but no worries on the live view. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay. We can we can go with this. Yeah. Today we are on uh, image number two thousand. Two thousand. Two thousand. And it didn't stop. Lock up on you. Well, don't don't oh say no, that. that. Don't, <laughs> don't, 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 don't attempt it. <laughs> don't jinx it. Oh, I'm gonna get. I'll be in trouble now. Yeah, they'll blame you completely. Oh, that's cool. Oh, you yeah. can see the numbers written right yeah. on the bow. Fifteen, ten. Did we ever figure out figure out what those are? I don't know what they are. Measurements of some sort. Is that every five meters or every five feet, you think? I would I, guess I, feet. I would doubt yeah. they are in meters yeah. back in 1946. Oh, nice crab there. Oh. Uh, I don't know, actually, the metric system dates back to the French Revolution. No, well, then it could be in meters. Maybe. It, but if it was the U.S. putting them on, it'd be feet. There's the Japanese. There's another crab in there, or maybe it's a... Yeah, based on the rough nice. length of this feature, I would... It's a total of about 18 meters, so... It's feet. Okay, feet. So in the chat, we have someone saying that they went and looked at photos of I-201 in the archive. And yes, um, it did have retractable mooring bollards on her stern. And the numbers are at every fifth frame of her hull. Oh, so very it's nice. So it's fifth frame. frame. Frame numbers, OK. And then someone is saying Japanese switched to metric in the early 1920s. Yeah, if you ever really want to sound like a like a real like maritime big dog, you just got to drop a couple of yeah. We are uh, forward at frame number two seven something like that. <laughs> Have you ever been in a sub? I have. Um, I've only, I've done a sub tour. Like if you go to Pearl Harbor, they have, you can tour the subs there or one sub there and a um, couple of the 
ships and stuff there, but yeah, you want to, how's it, have you deployed in a sub? Um, yes, I've gone on submarines. <laughs> so it's cramp. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's very modern, you know, it's very modern. It's, you know, state of the art inside. It's like being in this control van, you know, um, uh, but at the end of the day, it's a lot of people in a very small space. Do you get a different feeling just knowing that you are on the bottom of the ocean? It's kind of, you know, I would say yes, because it's, you know, you're somewhere in the middle of the water column. Back, um, so we're, I'm uh, from Rhode Island, and for a long time in Providence, we actually had a, a Russian submarine that was, um, I, th I think it was used as the set for the, K the Harrison Ford movie K-19, like 20 years ago. Oh. But uh, it, was a, it was a Russian uh, diesel electric, you know, sub. I mean, it was pretty old, but it was, it was restored, and they did, they actually had tours, you know, you'd, you'd just go, you get to see, you know, you get to see everything. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, it was old and, and you know, one day it, it finally ended up flooding and sinking. I mean, granted, it, it sank to like, like 20 feet. Yeah. I mean, the Providence River is not particularly deep. Oh, we, we do have like a big, our port area. I mean, it is like a decent, you know, commercial port, but it's, I mean, it's not like it's like a thousand meter, you know, meters. But uh, it was a really cool attraction. That's cool. Was it, was it with the battleships? Did they have like, or they had uh I forget where it is, just north of like Newport. Oh, so the Oh that that's Massachusetts. Yeah, that's yeah. that's Fall River. Fall River, yeah. So you have um so if you look at like southern New England, you've got Connecticut, you have the USS Nautilus. Okay. Yeah. And then in uh, Groton and then in, in Providence, you know, you well you used to have the Russian sub. And then in Fall River, Massachusetts, you have so the World War Two battleship, I forget the I keep mixing it up with Iowa, because Iowa was in San Pedro. Yeah. But um we do have a, we have like a little battleship row in Fall River. And you used to have old aircraft carriers at Newport, but I think both of them are gone. Yeah, I have, I have, um, I, I haven't seen those in forever. So we have a request in the chat for her to zoom in on those circular features we saw in the bow. Um, Right now, we're doing a photogametry scan of it, so we can't stop and do that right now. But who knows, later on, possibly I'll put your request out there for those higher up than me to decide. <laughs> Zach, is that going to be enough tie points, or do you kind of need them to go sort of at a 45 on each side to get enough tie points? You're the expert on this. Um, I think, I'm guessing, Simon, you're going to do multiple passes, is what you're thinking over the top? Uh, yeah, I was going to do another one uh, down this yeah. right-hand side as I look at it now. Yeah, that should that and should be good, I think. I just wasn't sure because you're going to have it this way and this way. Do you need it on the 45? Um, Since it's so I, small. I walked in after that first pass. So I'm not sure where he got. So he went around He went around pretty much at just ROV level. So it's really, you know, almost at a 90 degree, like parallel with... Uh, parallel with the sand, yeah. and now he's kind of kind of coming over it at 90. But do you need it sort of at a 45, up higher, on um, a, you know, on icing the cake? Potentially, but let me see if I can go back through, just get a better idea. <coughs> I just kind of want to make sure you're getting everything you need. Yeah, 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 totally. Because this is this is a really nice model put up. Yeah, or, you know, like. definitely. I think it'll be really it cool when we make a 3D. You can print it out and have the bow section and the aft section like broken apart. And, Where know, they go together. And then That's put the them question. together. Yeah. Well, if you're watching Atalanta, you can see those circular ones right now yeah. in channel feed two. Have 
viewers saying it looks like the bow skidded when it slammed into the seabed. That would explain the bent plates at the peak and how the bow seemed more compressed than the stern and midship. The notch towards the deck line looks like her anchor well, and they believe that it swung out from the side to lower instead of dropping straight down. So Simon, can you go back through each, you know, long edge, just sort of higher, so that, it, you know, that sees the side and the top at the same time? Yep, no problem. That way we're just sure that it ties in. There's a nice view. A nice view of those circular features. Looks like one of them has a bit of a, it almost looks like there was a maybe red paint or something. It's kind of a really regular circle. Seems too irregular for just random deposits. You, uh, you can almost see the red paint underneath, right? Like it was uh, anti-fouling or something like that. Oh, yeah. Hoping that the current was going to try and pull yeah. it out. <coughs> it's like, I don't think that we have, I mean, it doesn't say we've got any wraps on it, but. Get out of your shot. like Atalanta and Hercules is kind of like the ultimate winner of a three-legged foot race here since they're tied together. <laughs> So the chat is saying that they think the line of original gray paint is her water line and that they would have painted more heavily. Uh, anyone that owns a boat knows that the hull at the water line will rot off first and that her anti-fouling paint is still there under that marine growth. They think those circular features are hydrophones and the Japanese borrowed heavily from the German submarine designs and they placed their hydrophones in the same location. All right, Zach. What? It, any any other recommendations? I think we got it covered. Yeah, I think you got it pretty good. Maybe you got good coverage. Rachel's yeah. Rachel's happy. Um. Yeah. If you want to just make one more pass, there she's going down to go. Um. She's 
ran to grab something, so we're okay. still on photogrammetry. I don't want to stop it because she has special scripts. So make one more pass. Roger. Dan doesn't want to be responsible for breaking the photogrammetry. That's correct. <laughs> it looks like the bow plane's there. Across the crab again, glass sponge as well. So Dan, what are the holes along the side of it? Of this, oh. When you look at this end, it doesn't look like there's any room for people to be in there, huh? <laughs> Would anyone go and ride, like, go in a sub? Like this kind of sub, not like a research sub. Not, you would? Not for me. <laughs> Why not? No windows. No windows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty content with this perspective. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think if there was windows and you could see outside, I might be more inclined. But I guess then that also makes it more places it could fail, right? Yeah, I know, um, you know Alvin's a great example of, our, or the, so Hurl had a Hawaii Undersea Research Laboratory. Their RV was, uh, was a, or sorry, their, their man sub was the Pisces 4 and Pisces 5. Um, but over on the, on the East Coast at Hui, we have the Alvin, and the windows on Alvin are like three inches. Yeah. Um, we just got finished upgrading Alvin to be 6,500 meters. Oh. So last year they did had the 6,500 meter dive in the Puerto Rico Trench. And now Alvin is on the West Coast. I would always be scared to be the one in the sub for the first time it's been upgraded to dive deeper, I have to say. I'm hoping to go on Alvin in December. Oh. Cross my fingers. Our very own Bob Waters, who's out on the ship with us, is uh, certified now at 6,500 as a pilot on Alvin. Wow. Well, I would love the opportunity to go to Alvin. So if there's ever an opportunity for a teacher to go, sign me up, Dan. All righty. I'll keep you in mind. <laughs> All right. And then um, our chat is letting us know that the two lines of holes we see running down, uh, the top line is to flood the submarine, submarine superstructure when she dives, and the bottom line is to flood the ballast tank when she dives. So thank you for that, chat. And Did, the did you uh, stop photogrammetry? Yep, we have stopped photogrammetry. And the chat is asking if the sub was built for speed, could a single torpedo have been enough to rip it in two? And I think there's a couple different factors. So anyone, feel free to correct me. I know the chat definitely will. 
um, but there was the battery fire we talked about. So Simon, you can go explore whatever you'd like. Copy that. There's the fire, battery fire, that seemed to have weakened the structure of it. And the fact that this was purposely scuttled, so I think it was pretty, probably pretty decent proximity that it was able to one shot. And it was not like the sub was trying to escape. Simon, do you want to do a close-up on these circular features that look yeah, like the hydrophones? Yeah, kind of I was thinking here, I was going to get close to them. not like to have been the guy who had to get out the sub and re repaint all those markings. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I've had to paint anti-fouling on a small sailing boat, and I cannot imagine boats this size. That sounds like a miserable job. Oh, we have a shrimp there. So definitely it's a project. <laughs> Uh, the chat is giving you love for the close-up. So thank you, Simon and Mike, for this great view. You're welcome. You can zoom in if you like. Yes, mm -hmm. please, Dave. Simon's call. Yep. Okay. Brittle star right there. A lot of brittle stars. Yeah. All right, looks like we're gonna count molecules of anti fouling paint here. <laughs> when when Dave says he's getting a close-up, he's getting a close-up. That's up. a heck of a zoom. Yeah. First time I've zoomed in anything in two days. <laughs> so, Zach, what's the pink coral? Do you know? I was actually going to ask if we could get a zoom on that pink coral on the... We, they've on been the asking left. questions on what the pink coral is, right, yeah. so Zach's going to ID that for <laughs> I'll us. I'll do some, some work on that one. Bubblegum. Bubblegum coral. A little bit of side uh, Yeah, that's side what I see here. Chrysa Gorgia. Yeah. So we don't have a little scale bar or something, we could leave this and if they visit 10 years from now or something, see the growth of it. It's photogrammetry. You're going to have it already. Well, maybe to that resolution. So Actually, that just well? turn the lasers on, <laughs> Simon, so we got it scale for them. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Bigger than the coral. Is that better? <laughs> So less than You want a measurement? This is measurements. <laughs> there you go. Magic. <laughs> so for those viewers, uh, the little green dots you saw there are known points. It's 10 centimeters between the dots. So it looked like that coral was less than 10 centimeters. And Dave, you are also getting some love in the chat for delivering the goods. Thank you. So people are saying that they do think they are hydrophones. See how they look like the center of your speaker in your home stereo system. And for Coral ID, one suggestion is hemicorallium. Uh, Shall we zoom in on it? Sure. Yes, please. Yeah. If, what we're seeing? Yeah. Looks like bubblegum coral. Tiny bubblegum coral. Yeah. Oh, nice. I 
and shrimp. Up on top. Yeah. Perfect. Simon, you want to go take a look? They, they, they talked about the vents and maybe the bow planes. Sure. Yeah, I can head around there. I think it's just right, right up the hall from you. So the chat is commenting that they don't think the battery fire did too much, but you can actually watch on YouTube a video of them scuttling the ship and that in the video it shows the submarine actually gets lifted three to four feet up and it's flexed by the explosion and it is right where the boat is ripped in half. And then they say that additionally, when the U.S. Navy scuttled surgeon equipment, they often loaded them with small, moderate amounts of explosive in order to guarantee it went down immediately. So that would be how one torpedo could take it down. That's a nice view of the bow. Someone else is uh, suggesting that it's not bubblegum coral, but maybe precious coral, Asako K. Matsumoto. I know Matsumoto I makes great, uh, Matsumoto makes good um, shaved ice on the North Shore. I certainly uh, bow to Asako's uh, knowledge versus mine. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll give Zach some time to look through our guides. I mean, maybe you can back up and we'll take a look at the uh, uh, bow planes. Yep. I think they're right underneath you or right behind you. Someone in the chat is saying that the circles are speakers so that they could play charge of the Valkyries while attacking. That was another movie, right? <laughs> was the... Uh, Apocalypse Now? Yep, exactly. Was. There we go. Does that look like bow planes? Where would have gone in there? Definitely. I'm coming on the uh, yep. cinema camera. It's got more of a downward angle on it. Still intact after 75 years. Coming up on almost no, 46, not quite 75. Number 75. Might need a, might need a bit of grease. Johan's, <laughs> got, Johan's got the calculator. I'm, I'm sure we can get it moving. <laughs> oh, yes. He just he just submitted something. I, he says, I think it's precious coral, not bubblegum. All righty. Prepare for direction. The director has arrived. So we have Asako on the line in our science chat, and um, they are saying that they believe it is the precious coral and not the bubblegum coral. Zach. Yeah, yeah, I got that here. Thank you. Hey. Lovely little jelly in shot there that just... All right. That was nice. Yeah. <laughs> this will take me about uh, five minutes to get all settled up and ready. Uh, where's that, Atlanta? Hanging out. Uh, cool. Um, maybe just to start, can you back up Hercules as much as possible? 
and uh, let's turn off the forward lights of Hercules and start seeing what kind of shots we got. Do you want me on the bow or the stern or where I am uh, now? Just where you're at right now. Let's just back up and see what kind of shot we have. Please. Let me know when you're ready for lights. Dun 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 Someone says the blob thing is interesting. Anyone's guesses on what the blob thing is? I am not sure. No, we're so far away now. Coming down. So far, there's a sea cucumber for Jonathan. Woo! Get that and, you know, fly right by that. Roger. That's your marker. Or Roger. we go in super close and then from the sea cucumber come out and then you have the whole image of the sub behind the sea cucumber. Ah, yes. I like that. Do you guys like that? I do love the way the corals look lit up like that. Uh, that's quite beautiful. So I just need to adjust our um, visualization computer here. Doop, doop. Also brings his own soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> Ultra talented. He doesn't love Jurassic Park oh, soundtrack. Come on, guys. Let's, we got to have something in our head here. <laughs> Besides, if I don't get at least one copyright strike on our YouTube per year, I'm not doing my job. Uh, ProRes 422. Maximum. Maximum resin. AC Link Master. 10.212 verify Hercules eerily mm. sitting off in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, my tether goes that way. <laughs> yeah. I still got an image on the screen, so mm -hmm. it should still be attacked. <laughs> 422. Okay, and do a test record. Python 3, ch -ch 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 curl, rec, start 10.12132132 10 is control. 213 video, video pro res, and exposure. Why does that look so different? Sorry guys. So we have in the chat asking if we research creatures like the Nadaf blobfish. I, I don't know, do you, Zach, do you know of the N-A-D-A-F blobfish, Nadaf? Um, I assume they're talking about just the... Regular blobfish. Yeah, just the blobfish, I'm not sure. Um, we, we do have in our gallery some images of blobfish that we have come across in our oh, expeditions, but we don't research one specific species usually. It's more if we come across it, um, we look more at species diversity, coral diversity, that kind of thing. But it's not like we're trying to target where blobfish live or something like that. But we have seen blobfish, so if you want to see them, check out our YouTube account mm -hmm. or check out our website, nautiluslive.org, and you can go to the gallery and type in blobfish, and you will see all of our blobfish footage. Okay. Let's check out. Start. And that's recording. And that's recording. And I can stop. And that stopped recording. And that stopped recording. Okay. And perilously close to greatness here, and Triclops. And let's yeet off the screen that froze. Bye. All right, everyone, we're living the dream here. And 
lights. Camera. Okay, so, yeah, camera action. Uh, so, dear hey. Simon. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Last we checked. <laughs> we only met a week ago, and yet I know you so well. Two weeks. <laughs> Two, Two weeks, weeks ago. Don't minimize our time. Dear Simon. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll pick up and we'll head towards the light and we'll counter spin around the bow tip and we'll continue on till morning around the other side. So uh, we should see the uh, shadow of Hercules kind of eerily present along the, uh, with the, the light behind us. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah. All right. Uh, and let's start with uh, lights off. Because lights we off. can. Are you ready? I'm ready, I'm yeah. recording. Lights are off. Slightly alarming. Yeah, I know all the yeah. black screens look No one likes black screens. <laughs> ready for lights? I'm ready. Lights, yep. ready. lights coming on. Copy that. All right, gentle beams. And um, Mike, once we start countering around the tip of the submarine, if you can sweep your light down the length of it yep. for a dramatic reveal. No. The haunt. Tell me when, Jonathan. Oh, uh, sugar on my shoes. We gotta extend the porch back out, or the uh, tool chain back out. <laughs> sugar on my shoes. That's my SPL mess. <laughs> what the extension? There, there you go. go. Yep. Yeah, just like that. Thank you. Okay, no um, okay well, we can just continue it from here. That's good. Okay. Let's just continue it because that. All right. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yep. And And sweep. Sweeping. And full beans down the length, Simon, at this angle. Follow the light. Not as dramatic. It's not as high off of the seabed, is it? Well, let's keep rolling on this with the cool Hercules shadow. A little closer to the sub, please. And then we'll start to do a counter spin around the uh, the uh, wreckage or the uh, damage. Fantastic. Okay. Just keep keep with that cool move. That's really nice. Okay, now once we're fully backlit, let's turn on the starboard light right now, or, or at some point. Oops. 
he folded up the arms. Okay, never mind. Uh, forward lights? Lights, upper. Uppers? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, keep going, keep circling. Okay. Just real slow. Get a little closer if we can, danger close. I mean, Simon Danger, not Dan Danger. Yeah, that looks pretty interesting. This eel is doing a good job holding its pose for it you there. Uh, photogrammetry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, photogrammetry mode, let's stay still. <laughs> He's seen us before. It's so nice for the wildlife to cooperate for That'll us. That'll look really cool in 3D. <laughs> Okay, build that model and alone. we'll continue down. Let and once we get past this uh, little dingle hopper there, the um, whatever that is, what is that? Uh, well, whatever that is, the uh, what is that? <laughs> looks like a machine gun mount. Yeah. Oh. Um, let's go lights off and get the ROV as low to the ground as possible. Let's just see what that looks like real quick. Yeah, nope, too much. Lights on. Looks good on Herc there. It looks good on Herc? Yeah, it looks, it's cool. It's like the light coming over the ridge oh, on yeah. Herc. <coughs> uh, okay. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Not much here, is there? It's a uh, pointy bit. Let me, um, hmm. okay, let's try it. Let's try just for the ultimate big, big wide. Um, so, can we get Hercules basically under uh, Atalanta, or maybe offset by 10 meters to whatever side you want for the current and the tether management? And let's just see how how much of a big wide wide we can get uh, using just Atalanta's light to light the scene. So the chat is saying the Dinglehopper is a steerable hydrophone array for getting bearings on a target. Whoa, that's cool. And they also wanted to know if you said gentle beans. And he said gentle beans with an M, like yeah, light gentle beans. beans. Yeah. So gentle light. To move forward gently, it's a ROV operator uh, specific. What's this big thing right here? What is that? Is that a rock, a part of a wreck. Oh no, that is could be the other, uh, the other rudder. Yeah, the other rudder, the missing rudder. Oh, Remember, we were missing the stern plane. Yeah. Steering plane. Oh, that fell off. That that Quite fell off. Away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. You were looking for that, Zach. You finally found it. <laughs> finally. <laughs> Good. All idea. the pieces come together now. Yeah. Let's Good just, idea. Let's just turn around ROV Hercules and. Uh, turn off its lights. I just noticed, I mean, the backscatter is quite intense. I don't know if this shot will wor wor really work. And for the chat, Daniel. yes, we believe that is her missing stern plane. Uh, do you want me to move the um, craft arm out a little, see what that light looks like? Um, no, no, I don't. Okay. Oh, wow, it's quite small. Um, okay, so let's back off Herc as much as maybe another five, ten meters. And then can we move Atalanta uh, to the left, to the port? Relative to Hercules? Hercules. Okay. I guess towards the bow of the wreckage. I'm basically just trying to get, see what it looks like. Can you turn off uh, Hercules' lights, please? Oh yeah, and uh, Mike, is there any way to get that tether out of the shot? We come up. Yeah. yeah. See what that looks like. Coming up a bit. Bridge, bridge now. And five Hercules, I, I need you to come up just a little bit too, five, please. please. Well, I like the shadow of the tether. It looks eerie. It looks like a uh, spider. Okay. Um, and can you sweep back and forth for me? Let's check out how this looks. Can. Uh, do you want me more light on the wreck, or do you want 
that I, lighting. Let's just experiment and sweep back and okay. forth and see what looks good, huh? Sweeping, one second. Yes. Angle down, so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, sweeping. Yeah. Let's go back to what it was. Uh, heading back. And let's go forward as he's moving back, Simon. Real slow. Yeah. This is filming in essentially zero light right now. But there's no way around it. Can you drop down Atalanta? Uh, Atalanta down. Yeah. And keep going forward, just super slow beans, real slow, gentle, gentle. And keep going down, let's make the light more and more intense. And uh, maybe start lateraling to the left, gently. Lighter Hercules. Lateral uh, Herc, Herc. And then now slowly back away, please, until we reveal Atalanta. I'm at a delta of 10 right now. And maybe raise up just a little as much as your tether management allows. Coming up. Lateral to the left, Simon, please. Delta 13. And lights off. Lights off. Okay, I'll stop, and um, let's reverse that shot, Simon, if you can go forward. Yep. And then lights on. All right, lights, lights coming on. Roger. Full beans. Yeah, that's nice. Rotate just a little more to the right while lateraling to the left. Rotate lights to the right. Uh, no, uh, Herc. Yep. Yep. Herc lateral left. Rotate just a little to the right. Keep the keep the two dot things, the torpedo tubes, kind of centered in frame. Coming down on the wire. Yeah, I'll take as much light as we can get now. Beautiful. And forward now. Delta of 10. Can you let, uh, sweep the light away from Herc? Yes. Herc raise up a little bit. Nah, okay, shot died. Um, okay, let's do just one last thing and let's, so we tried the backlight one. Can we try the backlight one? And if, since there's so little uh, heave right now, can we try to get Atalanta pretty low down? Uh, yeah, can we step up? Uh, I was gonna say. A little bit, another five meters to the east. Sure thing. Yeah, stretch out. Bridge, bridge, nav, five meters at zero nine zero, please. I think that fish has been following you around. Thank you, guys. They're looking for their glamour shots. <laughs> 
needs a professional headshot. I think while we're waiting for an uh, Atalanta move, can we see how close we can get to some of these, like the torpedo things with the, with the white uh, corals? Hydrophone arrays. Yeah, we've decided they're hydrophone arrays. Oh, the dual circles are yeah. hydrophone? Oh, I thought the Well, that's a mounted thing. thing. Apparently, there's hydrophone arrays everywhere. I don't oh, know. I thought those were... Oh, I guess they're not... Okay. There you go. Raise, raise me up. Raise me up. So at the top, and I think counter was just a little bit. That looks really cool. Oh no, not recording. Yeah. Okay, we're not getting anything of note here. Um. Let's do one last uh, kind of low, slow float over the bow tip and into the abyss unknown with lights off on everything but Atalanta, and then uh, we'll call it for the day. Can you think of anything? No. Nope. Anyone, any other input from the control van that have been here and have creative thoughts? Because I don't think you can get low enough no, we to have Atlanta, you know, we can't, like yeah. to come up and reveal Atlanta. Like it's just not high yeah. enough to do that. So the chat is saying her torpedo doors are just above here and a little forward. Oh, I see those. The long. Yeah. I think we've done well here. Let's. Um, you don't want to go back to the steering section for anything. Yeah, let's let's just fly across the bow here, really slow, and uh, we'll 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 go towards the stern section and just keep flying forward, please. It's kind of the ending shot, okay? I'm stopping, and I'm. The proper wash kind of makes it look like yeah, there's I really a ghost, love that. I a love ghost it. next to it. So you can proceed forward um, at pace. Do you want lights off? Roger. Uh, no. Okay. Oh, yeah, I do. You're right. Okay, you're right. All yeah. lights off and then lights on, please. Lights coming off. All right, I'm done for today. You did a great job. Okay. Right. We are dark coming back on. And action. In the edit, I'll definitely have the sounds of those like gym lights turning on, even if it's completely unrealistic. <laughs> or you could have Indina Menzel singing Into the Unknown. Into the Unknown. I am putting this out that the chat would like you to look back at um, the missing stern plane and if there's a debris field somewhere. Oh, that I, it looked like that was just a single unit out in the abyss. You can uh, go forward with a few more beans, sir. Roger. Yeah, based on our map, we might have one other piece of debris about 50 meters west, but other than that, it's pretty intact. Yes. Yeah. Do you want a crab ID? I'll go ahead. Yeah, no. We, yeah, we sure. can do it afterwards. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm good with that. Thank you. That's a great shot.
Um, and I guess uh, if someone wants a crab. Crab. And, and I'm done. I'm just yeah. reading the chat. They want to go yeah. see that. So Simon, do you want to take a look at the uh, stern plane quick? <clears throat> yep. Some, some light. Oh. What else did they want? The what? Um, the the around. 50 meter We're west yep. debris that was mentioned. Zach, do you remember which side it was on? No. I think, I think we're on the correct side, so we'll just take a look at the stern plane. Yeah, if it's there, great. Back. If it's not, no big deal. I'm just just curious. We are here for curiosity. I think the crab was on the western side, about halfway up, maybe closer to the bow. Did you want to investigate that piece of wreckage just so that Chris can correspond his map with it? Yeah, as I'm flying down that way. Dave, did you want to zoom in on that? Simon's call. Stand by, I'll get there. Okay, you want to uh, can zoom in? Opportunistic anemone. I'm good. I'm done. Yeah. I'm. Nope. I'm. I'm entirely done. Yep. Come up um, five meters on five meters on that Atlantic coming up. So Johan, where was the where was the other piece of debris? Uh, I mean, it could just be rock, but all the way. Over oh, all here. the way over there. All right. Yeah. Do you want to? What, what do you want to do? You want to investigate it just so Chris can know what it is? Okay. We're up. Uh, if we're looking for something, then it's an option. I'm not sure. Well, once we're once we're done with this, we're gonna come up. So okay. it's up to you guys. D would Chris like to know what it is? Is he in a data lab? Uh, I doubt it. He's been working all day. All day. Okay. Taking a rest, but. Yeah. Um, and if you don't see the crap, no worries. So I think it might have been on the other side. Yeah, I think it's on the other side. It seems That's like, all right. Well, it seems like it's been sitting in it chilling. hasn't really moved much, so I bet it's still there. Yeah. All right, so what am I doing? Did I see these, this coral bioluminescent earlier? That's no, I think it was just backlight. Just backlight? Yeah, okay, it was with just... The gain up. Yeah, we were gained up. I've seen with similar it. ones bioluminescent when you shake yeah. them. We, we were, it was just sneaking over the edge of the sub from the Atlanta lights. Okay. I have seen them gr shine green when they're disturbed. Aren't we all a little disturbed? Looking for a crab. 
Last time I remembered, he was on a grate. Yeah, but in the top, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's quite large. Well, I think we'll be able to see him if he's still out. Oh, yeah. Here there he is. is. Oh. There we go. Yes. Right there. He's still in the grate. Uh, the chat is asking if there's a lack of biodiversity here and what is the current like? So, I mean, do you think we'd be able to get a zoom on that? Yep, let's get set up and settled. Okay, thank you. I don't think there's actually a lack of biodiversity. It takes a while for things to grow and you can see there's quite a few corals. Um, in the grand scheme of things, this hasn't been sitting down here that long. So it is growing, but uh, it takes a while. Yeah, and this is what you'd consider a novel ecosystem. Yeah, this is not a a, a normal ecosystem by any means. It's it's all from. Hey, Dave, do you want to structure we have introduced? So, oh, nice. Oh, so no, he's eating. He is he's eating. Hungry. Perfect. Oh, even more. Sweet. They say the uh, chat is saying that the slot underneath the crab is the anchor crane for the anchor. I awesome. think I saw an eel in there too. Thank you, David Simon. I wanted to see what he was eating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some leftover Halloween candy, probably. <laughs> cool. Speaking of leftover Halloween candy, I thought we were supposed to get some chocolate-covered peanuts today. I didn't hear that. They uh, <laughs> made it as far as the table in the mess and then disappeared, and I apologize for that. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I had Pete bring them up uh, from our cabin. They were all stuffed in a bowl, and the ROV crew saw them, and away they went. Yeah, that'll happen. Always the ROV crew. Well, you know, it was it was Dan and Bob. Don't blame me for that one. I didn't like peanuts <laughs> right, at all. Yeah, so. and so uh, the rest of them I took over to the ship's crew table and gave to them. Well, the ship crew is very hardworking, so they deserve it. Absolutely. The pretty big size an enemy right there. That's a nice shot right there. Yeah. Made Jonathan look up. Yo. <laughs> so. Crab and enemy. So now, what would you like to do? Uh, I guess let's head over and look at that thing real quick. And then okay. Yeah. Pop up. Sounds good. All right, chat, you hear that? Your wish is our command. We're heading Range over to go check out the last please. piece of debris. Thank you.
So the chat is asking if it's possible the U.S. painted the red numbers on the sub as they surveyed it before sinking it. Um, what was it we said that someone else in the chat had said it marked the... The frames. The frames. Yep. So, I mean, anything's possible. So. And the chat is saying that they all they know is that there are pancakes to be buttered and that to take those home. Agreed. Well, although I do take some of the filming out aspects um, lightly, I think that it's important to remember just how many people died during this conflict. And this really does stand as a testament to the end of a war and so much emotion I'm sure that was going around um, even though this submarine itself wasn't involved in the conflict and was captured after the war um, I think it's still important to treat these sites with respect and with the understanding of, of what they represent so thank you for those words Jonathan and yes it is a very important thing and I think Hawaii we have a very deep connection with World War II yeah uh, same thing for my my family's from Guam and it's uh, it was foundational Mike and Simon, the chat is saying that they admire your ROV piloting skills. And Dave, they thank you for your phenomenal zoom skills. And that you all seem to make Hercules dance. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dave, I'm going to um, offer back triclops to the data team downstairs. Copy. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, thank you. Yep. I think we, CQ CQ we do have another Just CQ cumber. <laughs> one last, one last little purple boy. Look, look at it. It's so cute. But don't actually stop. Keep going. <laughs> the ship keeps moving. The ship keeps moving. Stops for no CQ company. I am definitely. I just keep so swimming. so we just since we have swimming. these uh, we've had highlight <laughs> clippings. So every time Daniela or the science communication fellow tags a highlight, it automatically appears on our desktop back at the University of Rhode Island, where my fantastic editor can take them and we make we make all of our cute little highlight videos. What is dangerous is that that makes it perilously easy for me to do a global search for sea cucumber and to just put together a mega compilation. Maybe you should do that. Uh, maybe you know. I maybe you I should. should unleash AI on our database of animals and say, I want three hours of sea cucumber. Well, oh, I have not highlighted any cucumbers, so it's a lot of other things. <laughs> I think we could go for a full 24 hours of nothing but cucumber oh and chill. We we have to get hire someone to cut make like some so catchy just tune, just you know? Passing oh over yeah. And it's about sea right cucumber based, so yeah. instead of like narwhals, narwhals dancing in the ocean, sea cucumber instead. So sea cucumber, sea cucumber, sifting through the sand, I'll, I'll causing let, a commotion. I'll let your high school students figure that one out. <laughs> All right. So if any of my classes are listening, extra credit, extra credit project. Great. Make a three-hour sea cucumber yeah. compilation and a jingle. Wow. Yeah. Three hours? <laughs> Minimum. Look, yeah. and another sea cucumber. Hey, they've actually have made me some pretty impressive movies for some assignments. I bet, yeah. That's a fat sea cucumber. It is. The chat is offering if they can come on Nautilus, they'll make a sea cucumber supercut for us. I like it. <laughs> Ooh, is that under the oh. What's this floating here? T 
Tina for of some sort? Uh, bopping Charge around a little bit. Huh. It's got a big shadow. It does have a <laughs> big... Okay. It's a jelly. Ooh. Oh, it's a jelly. Cool. Can we get down lights on and let Dave zoom to his... Ooh. Oh man, backscatter. Oh, look it at It looks him. cool in the um, fish eye. Uh-oh. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah, too much backscatter. Yeah. Ah, much better. I think that we did remarkably well considering the uh, light lighting conditions are for the backscatter. Mike, uh, again, yeah, um, definitely, you know, director of lighting. <laughs> <laughs> um, your, your, hey, should I sweep the light? That was that was entirely you and inspired. <laughs> Trying to yes. make Kirk look good. Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to go down to the data lab and um, start doing fun reality capture things. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, everyone. That was incredible. So, someone is in the chat is pointing out that the I-14 was scuttled right next to the I-201 so that this 50 meter west target that we're going to might be a bit from the I-14 instead of the I-201. And I guess we'll find out because it looks like it's just coming into view now. Uh, just about the end of your tether. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Is that a torpedo? That uh, looks no. like... Is that an old torpedo? I was going to say, it uh, kind of looks like unexploded ordnance. Oh. Maybe. Jonathan now doesn't know if he's going to leave or not. <laughs> can take a look at that left side and see if there's a prop on yeah, it. Yeah, there's a little prop there. Because I thought, yeah, on the... <laughs> Yeah, looks like it looks like an old torpedo. Yeah, maybe. I mean, if it's a little prop in the back there, right? Jonathan has decided to stay. Yeah. <laughs> we may be taking photogrammetry of this. So we have we have a viewer asking for a visual description to help them picture because they're visually impaired what a sea cucumber looks like so these sea cucumbers we've been seeing are kind of this iridescent purpley color a little bit transparent Yo. has this light purple to it and it's oblong shape um usually has a few little bumps so if you think of your how a cucumber the food feels and oh, then that a bomb? change that to a gelatinous, squishy, purple item. That is what a sea cucumber would look like. What's the marking on the tip? Oh, that's definitely a torpedo. Look at the, uh, it's got a... It's got a prop. Prop thing. Yeah, there's a prop on the oh my God, left God, side there. Great. Now I'm going to have to do it. Yep. Definitely nah, we don't need thing. photogrammetry of this. Do you want photogrammetry of this? I don't it's know. It's a nice I model. Think, I think a... 3D right. printed okay, torpedo okay, could gonna, be okay, fun. Okay, okay, okay. Just give like a boot and I'll just one more time. <laughs> All right. Uh, and so um, what this torpedo looks like is if you think a Nerf gun, right? So you have a Nerf gun where it kind of flares out at the back. At the back end, it has a little propeller. And um, <gasps> it even looks like it has lines <gasps> coming down it. And then at the end, so it's very oblong shape it really looks like a nerf gun thing to me like the the nerf gun bullets the orange uh, nerf yeah, gun bullets poke really gently. and it has a propeller on one end and it's kind of painted yellow at the other end <laughs> all right and let's do a quick photogrammetry spinny a rooney please 
And so some people, uh, someone in the chat is saying that they think this is from the queen yeah. fish. Oh yeah, the one that actually tried to go for it. Python, Python three timer dot pi. And the chat is asking how magnetic is Herc, and that we might not want to get too close to Start it. Started photo photogrammetry. Uh, we're definitely keeping a uh, one Herc standoff distance there. <laughs> it has a yellow, it has a yellow tip though. So yeah. isn't that like a dummy? Oh. Someone's saying it's the after body of the torpedo. No, it's got a. Well, I, I don't I have no idea. It's, they say it's the afterbody of the torpedo that this sank the I-201. The warhead of the front explodes, well, we but down. the air flask engine and propeller sinks. Oh. So they say, someone else is saying it's too short to be a full Mark 18. It was an electric torpedo, so mostly it was all battery. No way. I can't believe that much torpedo remained. Our propulsion cylinder. Not the most eloquent when I'm not talking about cameras. <laughs> <laughs> the 2B explodey make go fast underwater thing. Well, that's a different screen. So I have one of my students asking, how often are the areas you currently oh, yeah. explore utilizing for underwater research? So all the areas we explore are utilized for underwater research. Um, so, but depending on what the exploration is, we might have a different focus for it. So this expedition is focused on this cinematography camera, but it's still just because we're focusing on the technology doesn't mean that the data we're collecting is not used for by any researchers. So like, we'll collect this MIG models of this submarine, historians can look at it. Biologists can also look at the growths and compare the different colonies and coral and changes to it in previous years and subsequent years. And so same with our other research sites that we have looked at throughout yeah. this expedition. If anyone wants to add to that. Yep. Alrighty. Up, up, up and away. Our current depth right. right now is 757 a, meters. In the 68. Copy that. And then we have a question also of what's the most bizarre discovery made by you and your team? So I think on this expedition, I don't, we've gone to places that have already been explored before. So I wouldn't say we've made any bizarre discoveries, but um, Nautilus itself and are its Are we preparing history. to surface? Yes, we are. Yep. Thank you. <coughs> Nautilus and its history. I know anyone may take that spin out. Um, Yep, whenever you're happy. Okay. I'm gonna come up uh, about five meters. Yeah, you can come up a little. Yep. I think Nautilus in its history has definitely made its share of discoveries. Dave, what do you think has been the most bizarre discovery Nautilus has made? Okay. Five meters up. Uh, gotcha. Bizarre. Um, okay, whale spinning. fall, octopus garden. Octopus garden's one of my favorite. Yeah. So um, for those of you who might not know, the Octopus Garden, this was um, discovered off of Monterey Bay, and they were studying the effects of, uh, de of fishing on coral and sponge gardens off of in Monterey Bay. And in the last like hour of the dive, they came across thousands of octopus who have tucked themselves into the rocks and with their tentacles facing out and wrapped around and protecting their eggs. So this was kind of the first time they've seen all these brooding females of octopuses hanging out together and protecting their eggs. And so um, Nautilus was the first ones to discover that and research has gone on and re gone back and visited that site over several times, including Nautilus has also returned as well. So if you go okay. into our website and gallery, you can check those videos and footage out, and it's really cool. I highly recommend it. 
So Michaela, thank you for the question. What do you want to do? Uh, no, I think we're coming up, aren't we? All right, we are starting our ascent. Our depth right now is 758 okay. meters. Oxygen yeah, saturation is 7.63%. If you want to investigate it, Simon, go ahead. All right, right to that. What are we investigating, Dan? I don't know. Oh, okay. That's what investigations are for. Totally. Oh. oh, something else over here. Um, so the chat's asking what's all the plume silt and we're about to start our um, ascent and then Simon noticed this other piece of debris. So when we try to maneuver around to go and check out this debris, it put a little backwash up and we had quite a bit of silt. And then the chat is asking what time the next dive is scheduled for. And it is scheduled for 7.30 a.m. tomorrow, Hawaii Standard Time, um, for being off deck. And we are going to go check out another submarine. Someone is saying that is one of the bollards from the submarine. Nice uh, starfish right there too. Alrighty, do we got a good enough good imagery? I think so. Alrighty, any other targets, Chris or Johan? Alrighty, let's head up. All right, now we're starting our ascent. We're at 759 Good. meters. Six, eight wraps are out. Roger that, tether wraps look good. Okay, taking off auto heading. Copy that. Auto heading is off. Driving ahead and coming up. So I can okay. see you. I'm starting to see you in aft cam. I think you have your aft lights off, though. Uh, yeah, I've just turned it on. So, yeah. Yeah. And then, chat, feel free to keep sending in any questions, comments. Um, we'll continue answering them until we get to about 50 meters. Six eight reading zero, tethers reading zero. Yep. Okay. Uh, tethers stretched out. Roger, roger. And utility page. Let's zero at zero at coming up ahead. It's starting to come up slow. Copy.
right, we only have one more day after this of exploration before our expedition comes to a close. Yes, but this is our last watch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, tomorrow it says Atalanta is going to do, right? So the rough plan right now is that we are off deck at 730. Um, and then we get back on deck at 1400. And then it says 1600 is Atlanta only dive. Yeah. They're going to just grease the cable. Oh, oh, we're Maybe going to send down our cups. Mm -hmm. Oh, so we don't get a watch tomorrow. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, you can hang out in the van while Atalanta's diving. <laughs> Actually, you see a could, lot of blue water. I want to see the cups. <laughs> we can watch the cups. My pumpkin, we sent a, not regular pumpkins like we did earlier, but we did some styrofoam pumpkins as well that we've decorated. But Dan, do you want to give us a dive recap? Sure. So uh, this morning we got off deck around 9.30, uh, went down. Uh, went to the location that we thought it was, and it was not there. So we then used the Norvitz to sonar to search an area out, and that took a quite a while, and essentially then found the stern section, continued, uh, continued forward, and found the nose section, um, came back and did a full Norvitz survey, so high-resolution survey, and then went and did photogrammetry of the stern, uh, did some high resolution video of the stern, then moved to the bow, did a photogrammetry of the bow, high resolution of the bow, uh, investigated the stern plane, investigated a crab for Zach, and then went over and uh, looked at two things that were, you know, in the Norbits, and we found the bollard and possibly an old torpedo. Yeah. And now we're coming back up. And then someone's asking what is the next sub, and that is the I-401 will be the next sub that we will be exploring tomorrow. And then someone else is asking about internships. And yes, we do have internships. Zach is an intern. Um, you can find information about our internship on nautiluslive.org. Click over on the education tab and click students and it'll talk about internship possibilities. And I think those are going to be opening up any time now. So keep a close eye um, if you want to apply. And Zach, you want to talk about your experience as an internship? And it's not only open to just college students, but you're also post-college, right? But you're yeah. doing your uh, graduate work. Yep. Yeah, I'm a graduate student right now. Um, but yeah, the internship's been, been amazing. Um, it's very hands-on. You're very involved from the start. Um, you, you get trained up real quick and, and, and then kind of just go from there. So this one was kind of a, a crash course, quick two week um, expedition. There's obviously longer ones as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, it's been, it's been great. A lot of data logging, a lot of um, other stuff down in the lab. I think everybody's kind of experience kind of varies depending on what the, the goal is of that trip. Um, but yeah, there's not just science interns, there's uh, the media video interns, there's the ROV interns. Um, navigation. So yeah, there's navigation interns, yeah. So there's plenty of opportunities. I think the applications are due end of the year, if I remember right. Um, but I, I don't know this year, last year they were anyways. I know when I applied for the um, science communication fellowship, and this is open for teachers, so any teachers out there listening want to come on out, I highly recommend it. Um, you can, it's also, so instead of clicking the student tab under education, you click the teacher one. And I think they're both this opening around the same time. And I know it closed in December last year. Yeah, now I this year, I don't December know. December 31st last yeah. year, but I, I don't. I know I had to do it because I was going on a trip. So I found out it was open, submitted it really quick, like the day before I left on a yeah. trip for Christmas and the holidays, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if it's open yet. Huh. And then uh, someone is asking, when is our next expedition? So our next expedition is in a few days after we land. Um, the ship kind of does a quick turnaround and goes straight back on out. Again, you can head over to our website, click on the expedition, and it'll tell you about all the planned expeditions. The one after this is a mapping. Um, it is the, 
Hawaii economic exclusion Hawaii mapping and they're going to be mapping the economic exclusion zone which is the 200 nautical miles out from the Hawaii Islands and that will be departing November 7th so we end on November 5th we get um, off the ship and then the next one leaves November 7th so it's really only a two-day turnaround and then so November 7th through November 17th is the Hawaii mapping and then November 19th through December 19th is the Jarvis Island mapping. And that will be the end of um, our expeditions for the year 2023. Well, I only counted three shrimp. Yeah, not too many and shrimp. And poor sea cucumbers. So sea cucumbers took the one for today. First time. Yeah. And the goose fish was saw on the earlier watch. We did not get a goose fish on our watch. No, we did not. And no headless chickens. There was a goose fish on the earlier watch? Yeah. Okay. The, the watch before us, I was in the lounge and I saw a goose fish. Well, this expedition we saw an awful lot. We started out with the basalt columns, right? Yes, and Molokai. And Molokai. And then we went to... Headed over to the Big Island. The Big Island and saw coral, right? Did we see coral? We did see coral. We saw the coral garden. I think garden. at our first stop, we didn't really see too much coral much, yeah. on the Big Island. We were off the south shore of the Big Island. Didn't see too much coral there. Then we maneuvered so, over to the McCall Seamounts. The yeah, so the McCall Seamounts. There wasn't too much no. on that. We did two days on the McCall Seamounts. That was very interesting geology. Yes, we had good geology, but not too much coral. And then we went back for coral. We went back to yes. coral, and we found because we were um, told we were just slightly off, so we got better description on where to go, and then we found the beautiful coral gardens. And then we saw. Small hydrothermal vents. Yeah. A little bit of water, you know, a little bit of shimmering water. I think they're just not active right now. And yeah. It kind of makes sense. It's not too much activity on the Big Island as well right now. So. And then we did the Deep Canyon yesterday, uh, Molokai yeah, Canyon. So after we went back, so we did the hydrothermal vents. We went back to the sea mounts of the Coral Gardens and then went on over to Molokai to do the north side of Molokai this time and do the canyons over there. And then today? And then today we're out at looking at these cool submarines. And we got one more dive for tomorrow. And we have one so more that'll dive. wrap up the expedition. Yep. All right, our current depth is 520 meters. We're at oxygen saturation. We've gone up to 12.2%. And our salinity is 34.2 PSU, and I think I skipped the temperature. Temperature is 6.98 degrees Celsius. So too cold for my Hawaii blood. The other sub we are doing is the I-401 is correct. And that will be tomorrow. And then they're asking if there's any plans for expeditions focusing on marine botany now or in the future. And so that goes above any of us in here. You, that's a more Nautilus expedition planning. We, we are not part of the planning um, focus. And so I think a lot of that is depending on our partners, our funders, and what they're interested in, but it takes quite a while of planning and time goes into each expedition, but we are not given um, foreknowledge on what is planned for the following year.
Dave, you've been with Nautilus for a while. Do you ever do you ever get insight into future expedition plans and objectives? Yes. <laughs> okay. Nothing I can share. Of course. And the schedule is very, very squishy. Yeah. <laughs> very much in flux. Uh -huh. Well, I think even this expedition was kind of flexing around quite a bit right up until we left. Yep. So. Yep. There's lots and lots of plans to be made uh, and uh, lots of people doing it, lots of science to take into consideration. Um, Lots of moving cogs. Lots of moving pieces. Uh, funding is always, you know, who's funding what and where for how long yeah. uh, and that, that kind of stuff. So that's um, that's how it all works. Uh, there's an advanced schedule that, uh, that I can look at for a, a general indication of maybe what might happen. Mostly I'm looking for when does the season start. Yeah. And I'm planning my schedule. Uh, my own schedule, but uh, it's it's very very squishy. So. Do you get any? Do you are you allowed to? Because you've been working with them so long. Do you get any say on like, oh, I really this one sounds really interesting. I want to work on this one, or is it just more time schedule for you? Um, so my supervisor uh, is the uh, uh, director of, or not director, but the manager of video operations, uh, and he meets with the other department heads, and they all talk about what happens. Uh, when the schedule gets firmed up, uh, then uh, he and I put our heads together and decide uh, who's going to take what, uh, how, for how long, and that kind of stuff. Uh, we've been training new video leads uh, so that we have uh, more people available uh, in case of uh, schedule changes, conflicts. Um, COVID threw us for, for a loop. We, we had people that couldn't come out on the ship. Uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, at one point, I was the only available video lead wow. uh, for uh, a period of several months. Uh, and so I spent a lot of time out here on Nautilus. And, uh, and so we've been training uh, new people, and we have uh, two new leads that we've uh, trained up. So. so the chat is asking if it's possible to tilt the camera up a bit to see if anything cool is in the midwater. So... We are tilting that camera up for you. I can usually catch stuff a little bit better when you're looking straight down. Oh, so. so if you look. There's also not much light pointing down, though. Yeah, if you look up, you're going to get. Just the white light? Yeah. Okay, so put it at whatever you think will give us the best option of seeing something. We will defer to your expert opinion. So someone is asking why salinity levels and oxygen are important. I've been reading them off because I think it's more interesting and see the changes, but it also will impact your um, biodiversity and life that you get at each level depending on oxygen and salinity levels. Yes, we're diving with the ROV, so it's not going to impact the ROV because the ROV is built to withstand that, but it's more for the biology aspect of it. Zach, do you want to add anything about how salinity and oxygen affects things? Or why we take those measurements? Uh, no, I don't got much more. I mean, yeah, it's going to affect certain life and certain the way certain things flow and whatnot. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of interesting to see. Yeah. Really is what it is. It's interesting to track and something you can always have. It's good to have as much me metadata as possible. So. And then it's also like if you see... Um, Climate change, like this year is an El Nino year, so if you dive this and this is the parameters here, and then you come by and dive it in a non-El Nino year, look at the temperature change. I know when I was doing fisheries biology work, we had this, um, where um, we had this big kind of like, uh, well, I forget what they called it, but there was oxygen depletion in a lot of the levels so there was like no oxygen even at the bottom and it was really affecting the fish you caught and things like that so we always put a profiler down um, for every single dive so each dive 
or not dive, every um, catch we did, right? So every haul we'd have that, we'd collect the pH, salinity, temperature, and then you can compare how much fish you caught to those parameters and you can kind of see it. And they've done this on fishing boats with all observers year round and you can see the changes in temperature and oxygen through the years. So it's actually really cool if you look at all that data that's compiled. So it's kind of one of those things that's just always kind of collected. You can look at, see how it might impact um, research. So. And then Johan, they're asking, do we ascend at the same rate that we descend? Oh, you're not on SPL, Johan. Sorry. Uh, generally, we usually ascend uh, usually a little slower, but it kind of depends on our situation. Uh, at this time, we're ascending maybe a little faster than we would generally descend, but still within our bounds, kind of. So I know Atalanta is heavy and sinks, so you have to use the wench to pull Atalanta up. Um, Hercules is positively buoyant, so you just not have the thrusters on and let um, Hercules kind of float up, or how does that work for a sense? So at the moment I've got, I do have some vertical up thrust uh, to go and see. It will come up, but it won't come up very quickly, which is mm. very okay. slightly positively buoyant. Uh, I've also got a little bit of forwards on to keep uh, the tether stretched out and make sure that we maintain our separation between Herc and Atalanta. And I also have a little bit of lateral on just to keep uh, fight against the current and keep me as, uh, lined up with the stern of the vessel. And that'll change as we come up. Um, I'll make minor adjustments here and there to make sure everything stays pretty much the same. And then I just try to uh, try to match with Hercules uh, speed so that our delta does not get uh, too too large. And by delta, you mean the change or the, distance? The difference in uh, vertical height between Hercules and Atalanta. Yeah, so we tend to keep them pretty much at the same depth as they come up. Okay. So, so they should arrive at the surface at roughly the same time. So Hercules depth is currently 267 meters. Our temperature has come up to 13.4 degrees Celsius. Our oxygen saturation is at 59.8% and our salinity is at 34.3 PSU. Yeah, slide a little bit into that, yeah. So the uh, chat is asking why are the ROVs named Hercules in Atalanta instead of Hercules in Atalanta. So Hercules is the Roman name where Hercules and Atalanta are Greek names. So I guess we're um, mixing our Roman and Greek. And I think just because Hercules is probably the more common pronunciation due to Disney. I'm not sure. Yeah. We Name well before me. Yep. We were not part of the naming committee. That's funny, only, uh, only science ROVs have particular names. 
What are the names of some of the other ROVs you've driven? So commercially, there is a. It's usually a, a code for the, um, or a name for the a particular brand, and then a number for the that particular unit that came off the production line. So, so things like uh, Perry, which became Forum, nicknamed or t named all theirs like XL, and then they then followed the XLS. Uh, XLX, XLX Evo, um, and then Schilling name theirs like HDs for heavy duties, UHDs for ultra heavy duty. Um, Sub Atlantic have uh, Native American names, so Comanches, Apaches, Mohicans, Mohawks, um, Super Mohawks. Um, Saab, CI tend to name theirs after animals, so you have tigers, cougars, pumas, um, yeah, uh, leopard is another one, so big cat names. And then generally they have a, a number after that to designate the unit number. Thank you for that. Very interesting. I think there's a lot said for a name, so it's always interesting to see why people pick the names. Sorry, was that uh, to me about names? What's that? Oh, no, sorry. I oh. thought you'd ask, ask me something else. I was no, no. I was no. just commenting that I think it's interesting to know why people pick the names they do for things. Yeah, it's interesting. So um, the University of Laval, their um, ROV is a Comanche number 38, but they call it Astrid. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's an, an acronym for, I forget what I forget what it's for, <laughs> but yeah. Um, it's uh, to do with remote operation of science or something like that. Remote instrument of science mm -hmm. or something. Um, the chat is saying there's one. There's the RV Sebastian. Sebastian, yeah. Sebastian. Yeah. And then Deep Discovery, D2. Yeah. Uh, Ropos, a remote operated platform of science. Um, Odysseus. Uh, Odysseus, of course. Odysseus. If you had your own... ROV, Simon, what would you name it? Um, Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Why Jeff? <laughs> I don't know, it's just the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> All, right. All right, Mike, what are you naming your... Oh, I'd probably call it Dingo Dog. Dingo Dog? <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, Johan, what are you naming your, your ROV? Uh, I'm not sure. I think I would have to think a little more. <laughs> we'll come back to you. <laughs> All right, Dave. What are you naming your ROV? Oh man, I got I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Zach. Everyone else better be thinking. I'm coming to you. I really didn't think you'd come with the back row. For this <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man, I don't know. Uh, we still have 144 meters to go. Yeah, I, I think this is a privilege reserved for the front row to name an ROV. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will just claim not worthy. Right then, Jeff it is. Apparently one of our viewers yep. is named Jeff, so they're very excited that you're naming it Jeff. <laughs> right then, Jeff, yep. send us your picture. Yeah, named we'll after you. Stencil it on the front. <laughs> What are we going to do with ourselves tomorrow from 4 to 8? <laughs> Pack. Pack. <laughs> Probably going to disconnect. Disconnect Hercules. Hercules from Atalanta. Yep. Yeah. And get all the, the grease ready. Yep. Yeah, Simon and Mike, you guys were both working into the wee hours. I was up at 2.15 for an interaction. I wasn't <laughs> expecting to see anyone. And they're hard at work on the deck working on Hercules. Yeah, what were yeah. you working on? So we uh, come in, our shift generally starts at 4 a.m. So we were around for 3 a.m. to get enough yep. caffeine in us <laughs> to get us functioning. And yeah, then we have to do all the pre-dive checks to make sure um, Atalanta and Hercules are ready to dive. So we go around, we check every single 
electrical connection. We check every single bottle, light, camera, every compensator is secure on the vehicle. Every sensor. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, every sensor, make sure everything's tied down, our buoy uh, ballast is secure, our buoyancy is secure, and we do full function checks on each system to make sure that they're communicating and functioning. So, yeah. It's uh, not like you your car where you just get in and yeah. turn the key and <laughs> go. We, we have a lot of checks to do before yeah. that happens. Basically do the dive on the surface and then, yeah, kind of run through everything to make sure it's all functioning. Well, how, how deep are we going with uh, Atalanta tomorrow? Hmm? How deep are we going? Uh, I think we're setting up for late evening 40, like 4,300, so. And uh, spin the cable out too. Take yeah, we'll get the cable greased going out, and then do a recovery on the way in. Yeah. So, Mike, can you explain why oh. it's important to grease the cable and what that means for our viewers? Yeah, we're going to be applying a uh, a eco-friendly grease to our cable, and that grease will keep the cable from uh, rusting and deteriorating. Uh, so we will apply it going out as far as we can, and then. Um, as soon as we're out of grease, we'll go ahead and bring it back in. And then that way during the off season, the grease will have the chance on the drum to penetrate in through all the wires and uh, it'll actually keep the, the cable in good condition. And then can you kind of explain, since this is our last ROV expedition, what happens to the ROVs? Uh, both Atalanta and Hercules are going to be put on shore and uh, there is some off-season projects and tasking that is uh, set up for them. So we're the ROV team uh, and the deck team are going to be pulling uh, certain parts and then uh, making modifications to both the vehicles. And they're asking how long does pre-check usually take? Depends on how much coffee we have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so generally from from start to finish in the morning, we're probably about an hour and a half yeah. of uh, of checks until uh, people come in and decide they want cameras in different places or they want something else checked or everything else. But the very basic initial pre-dive, um, yeah, we're about an hour and yeah. a half. We can get them done. Depends on how many cough and how much control. sleep. Because I think we last time I saw Simon, meters. he was like, I'm operating on two hours Please of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, this morning was... Uh, a little rough. Two, two hours yeah. of sleep and five coffees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, everyone. We are now at 50 meters. We're above 50 meters, so we're going to sign off. Have a good night and tune in for a dive tomorrow. Good Goodbye. night, everyone. Good night. Good night.